So I hope everyone has an engaging, exciting, and exhilarating day. So we are the fourth group of BSMLS 1M, and we will be presenting to you our informative presentation regarding the state of science and technology during the Middle Ages from an Adomini 400 to 1300 in the Western world. So without further ado, let us welcome Ms. Muscate and Ms. Arbeta to the virtual floor. Good day, everyone. Let's begin with the abstract of this presentation. In the Middle Ages, AD 400 to AD 1300 in the Western world, this is the period of history between the ancient times and the modern times from the fall of the Western Roman Empire centered in Rome in 466 AD to the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire centered in Constantinople in 1453 AD represents the so-called Middle Ages or the medieval times in Western Europe. Science and technology in the Middle Ages flourished because of the need of inventions to make life easier. In Europe, from the 5th century to the 16th century, there was a radical change in the inventions made. It was between the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the early modern era. This was a time for exploration in new ideas and ways of doing things. Europe invented many things for wars, timekeeping, and for everyday use. These inventions may be still used today. They ranged from huge mortar to a small set of eyeglasses, and Europeans found that life was easier with new, better inventions to help them in everything. And there are a series of inventions about war because of nearby wars with neighboring civilizations or even within Europe. Ms. Arbeta? Okay, so the thoughts, beliefs, and values of medieval Europeans were dramatically different from those of the modern people. Europeans living in post-medieval periods such as the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, as the names of those years suggest, self-consciously tried to portray, portray themselves as somehow overthrowing the formal structures and restrictions of an early age. And in the process, they managed to denigrate and misrepresent the life and thought of an entire millennium. The Middle Ages were born in the still mysterious process that caused the disintegration of the Roman Empire and the whole whole of uh, medieval culture was affected by a widespread attempt to regain the glories of classical civilization. Yet, in the midst of this apparent attempt to recreate the past, medieval Europeans moved forward as well. There were many important intellectual advances during the Middle Ages, including the beginnings of almost every modern vernacular European language and the written scripts to record them the origins of such fundamental institutions as parliamentary government and the university and a host of everyday inventions from eyeglasses to wheelbarrows to gunpowder. During the 19th and 20th centuries, scholars have greatly increased their knowledge about the Middle Ages, gaining respect for the genuine accomplishments of these vital and productive periods. And now let me, let me introduce Ms. Ong to tackle us the next topic. Let's now discuss the impact of Greek and Arab knowledge. It was in the avid intellectual activities in the universities that there came bulk of Arab and Greek knowledge that had been preserved in the Dark Ages, translated into Latin mostly from Arabic and some directly from Greek, including the following. First, some improvements in Alhazen optics by Dietrich or Ritalo and Freiburg, including an account of the rainbow. Second, a treatise on sporting birds by Emperor Frederick II. Lastly, a few notes on minerals and natural history by St. Albert Magni. Moving on to the medieval science to be presented by Mr. Petras. Thank you, Maureen. Now we come to medieval science. The totality of the medieval natural science achievement can be summarized as, first, at the common level, however, life in me medieval times was full of irrational beliefs, mysticism, and superstition. It was believed that the light was analogous to the divine illumination and someone who studied optics. Grossitas thought science basically as a means of illustrating theological truth. Next slide, please. The watermill and windmill watermill was invented in the Stone Age. By using suitable mechanism, its rotary motion could be converted to reciprocal motion, making it a source of general power. Criticism of Aristotle's theory of motion by Buridan and Oresme also took place. Third, 
windmill from Persia reached Europe about 1,100 Anno Domini. It was primarily for blowing bellows, filling cloth, forging iron, sewing, weaving, and threshing. To sum it all up, in medieval science, it was thought that it was full of irrational belief, mysticism, and superstition. Light was analogous to the divine illumination. Third, Robert Grossitas also thought, made thought about science. Fourth, innovation of windmill and water mill took place, and criticisms of Aristotle's theory also took place. And lastly, it, that included the windmill to Europe. Mr. Palenio? Now we will discuss the technology in the Middle Ages, specifically in Europe. This period saw major technological advances, including the adoption of gunpowder, the invention of spectacles, and mechanical clocks. Now, for the first one, we have the new horse harness. Collar pulling on the shoulders of the horse instead of a band hugging his breast allowed the horse to increase its attractive effort five times. Next, we have the mariner's magnetic compass. The ability of a natural magnet to show direction was known to the Chinese several centuries ago, or about six centuries. The magnetic compass was an important advance in navigation because it allowed mariners to determine their direction even if the clouds obscured their usual astronomical cues such as the North Star. It uses magnetic needle that can turn freely so that it always points to the North Pole of the Earth's magnetic field. Third one, we have the clock and watch. Just like the horse collar, the clock and watch seem to have come from China. Though it, though it was developed in the present form in Europe, in the 11th century, an ingenious mechanism was devised through imparted a to and fro motion. So a to and fro motion is like what I am demonstrating right now, if you can see me clearly. Thus, the mechanical clock was born. The key difference is that a watch is usually at at attached to a strap or is a band worn around the witch, which tells time. A clock, however, is a wall-mounted instrument for calculating time. Next slide. In connect to that, we also have gunpowder and cannon. Of all the inventions introduced to Europe in the Middle Ages, gunpowder of Chinese origin was to have a greatest effect scientifically, politically, and economically. Their use and was initiated a technical revo revolution in warfare comparable only to what happened at the start of Iron Age. Next, we have lenses with spectacle. The discovery of lenses in the invention of spectacles in Italy around 1350 AD gave impetus to the study of light or optics. For the sixth one, we have the stern post rudder. The stern post rudder apparently came also from China. This led to the development of the sail that could be adjusted such that ship voyages could be made in rougher weather. Next slide, please. Now we have distillation and alcohol. The first preparation of strong spirits of wine was made in Europe in the 12th century. As the distillation of perfumes and oil was already known, alcohol was probably produced by accident in the course of some medical preparation. Next up, we have printing. Like paper, printing originated in China using movable wooden type. It was introduced in Europe in the middle of 15th century Anno Domini and spread extraordinary and rapidly for books. Lastly, we have paper. Paper and paper making originated from China based on vegetable fibers. It was already widely used in China as a cheap writing material in the first century before Christ. And that is all for the technology in the Middle Ages, specifically in Europe. Now let us discuss the medicine in the Middle Ages. The medical school of Salermo that flourished from the 10th to the end of the 13th century was the first organized medical school in Europe. Various herbs were used widely. Therapy was through prayer, magic, charms, amulets, and faith healing. Medical learning was devoted to the study of ancient authoritative texts, astrology, world prognosis. Diagnosis was, was largely limited to inspection of the urine. The new bourgeoisie was initially were interested in profit than belief. When they found the church an obstacle to their increasing wealth and power, they became most ardent advocates of reform. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so for the interaction of medieval technology and medieval economy, so by the middle of 13th century, the rich merchants and town oligarchies acquired monopoly position and cooperated for the common exploitation of fewer territories. So further, a new impulse to art and technology, art, technology, and science rather, art becoming more peculiar and more naturalistic. In pottery, textiles, glass, and metalwork, there was incentive and opportunity for practical research on the properties of matter, chemical, and physical, or providing the material basis for the revival of science. So to wind up everything, the medieval ages was an era where radical changes happened and the time for exploration of ideas and innovation began. Furthermore, science and technology flourished and gave rise to inventions that gave people convenience that up until now is seen and observed. So thank you so much for listening for our um, informative presentation. And I hope that everyone will enjoy the rest of their day. Thank you.